What's up everyone, Vaz the Crack here, and we're back at it again with another build for the Sentinel. Um, just right before the 0.8.3, which is going to be, I'm changing my other caster build uh, after that patch releases, so wait for that video. But today we'll be talking about my caster hammer build, and let's get into the build idea here. Alright, so caster hammer, so with our hammer throw passives, so we're going to be throwing three hammers per cast. And each hammer is going to have that 25% chance to cast smite. And we're really trying to increase our smite damage with everything that we're equipping and our some of our idols as well. So each smite has a 100% chance to cast a lightning bolt. And lightning bolt's going to be doing increased spell damage as well uh, from what you're going to be porting smite with. So each hammer throw now, uh, since we have future strike, will have a future strike for each hammer and that future strike will have a 25% chance as well to cause a smite and that smite is going to be causing a lightning bolt and if the uh, smite does hit a enemy it's going to also cause a future strike as well but that's not going to be like an infinite loop that's not going to happen so that smite is going to cause a future strike just a uh, fraction of the damage, like a fourth of basically what that smite damage is. Um, since we're going to be increasing void damage, we're going to be changing smite to void damage. And as well as the lightning bolt is also going to cause a future strike, but that's not going to loop around 100% uh, of time. Alright, so basically here how that uh, smite lightning bolt works. Let's say a smite hits this guy. And we're gonna be smiting two other opponent or lightning bolting two other opponents. That's gonna be one, two, three. And let's say smite hits um, one each. That's gonna be one, two, three, one, two, three. So they're gonna be getting three lightning bolts uh, per one smite if a smite hits. That's just gonna be a lot of damage. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the skills here, guys. So I got a hammer throw. Lunge, Smite, Holy Aura, and Sigil Scope. So Hammer Throw, um, you would want to be unlocking this area for Hammer Vortex. So this is, uh, this is going to make your hammer spiral, and this is going to make the hammers follow you as they spiral over you. Um, unlocking the Catapult, so you want to max this out to 2. So you get extra projectiles plus 4, but since it is halved by this one, so you're going to be only throwing 3 hammers uh, per cast, which is still a lot. And you want 4 points in Ballista to reduce that mana cost by 4. Um, you want 5 in ha uh, Rapid Throw here, so increase your attack speed by 25. And you want 5 in Weighted Hammer, so it'll deal uh, more damage, but it does uh, move slower. So why you want it to move slower? So you can guide that hammers uh, to the target here. So what I like doing when it's like a high HP enemy, I cast my hammers to see how it can rotate their... Uh, uh, Counterclockwise. So you want to do is you clockwise. So you just guide the hammers basically. It's, it hits the same with the It gets kind of hard when it gets bigger, but as long as you guide those hammers, it's going to be doing a lot better. Right there. See that? Alright. So next skill is lunge. You want the lunge for the Avengers charge here to increase your crit chance uh, by 200% there. Uh, you just get initiated to unlock that one so you do get crit chance so 240% crit chance alright so you want to max out tactician so you have mana efficiency with your lunge and you do want the uh, unstoppable uh, so you're invincible while lunging I uh, just max out forge on so I get more at armor for 2 seconds after lunging I did unlock double strike it does increase the mana cost but does doesn't really matter uh, because we're not really spamming it Head damage doesn't matter for uh, lunch because you're not really dealing damage with lunch. So this one I just have extra lunch charge and I gain some health uh, from the lunch. Alright, so my uh, main damage source here will be uh, the smite. Um, so let's go to the uh, tree here. So blind chance, uh, you just need this to unlock um, the order of Lagan, changing it to lightning, but you don't really need the lightning because you're going to be changing this to void anyway with your void knight passive. All right, so you just really want that to unlock the uh, unbalanced scale. So you're lightning bolting uh, per void. So you have three lightning bolts uh, per void. 
plus two so this one just clears the enemies uh, quicker with the plus two as <laughs> explained in my previous uh, uh, diagram and paint all right so five points in sacrifice this one 250 percent more damage than multiplicative uh, after the fact of everything other modifiers so 15 percent of health uh, is used per cast as smite but that can be reduced by conviction so you got this maxed out also i have my base crit chance uh, at 10 percent uh, just maxed it out the cast speed doesn't matter because this is cast speed based on uh, smite but we're actually casting hammers to cast smite so it doesn't matter but you really just want the base crit chance here if you do have like a lot of increased crit items if you could just max that uh, like match that uh, your base crit chance you could transfer three points to here to do even more damage uh, increase your crit multiplier um, so it does more damage for crits yeah, that's up to you so holy are this one um, I got this one for getting more crit multiplier more crit chance and also attack speed and casting that hammers uh, more hammers more damage basically um, just have a little bit of resistance from this one uh, call to arms is just to unlock uh, this area for throwing uh, attack speed and as well as uh, crit ch uh, haste chance anyway so we could clear areas pretty quick all right next one sigils of hope so you want iron sigils so five points in this one so you could unlock um <clears throat> not really unlock so you could get like 200 armor per active sigil uh enduring hope so you get more duration per sigil and tetragraph or another sigil basically so you get or maximum now five points in the power sigil so you could get that uh, 30 percent that da increased damage per sigil so 120 percent total you also want last wish so it's kind of automatic it doesn't really matter to be automatic or not if you're fighting a boss you could uh, manually cast it since you're getting mad up or smite anyway from one of your gears so decree of flame this one's just to unlock my uh, sigil of despair so you get increased void damage per sigil, so that's 60% increased void damage for that one. Alright, so why we want that void damage is because of the temporal corruption. But, let's go through the sentinel passes first. Maxed out my juggernaut for resistance, uh, void and fire, some strength there. Uh, maxed out my armor clad, so I get less damage from nearby enemies. Uh, relentless this could be maxed out if I was a dual wielding, but I'm going to be dual wielding for this build. Uh, this just increases your stun avoidance and uh, increased damage as well. Uh, Gladiator, so you can dual wield. Um, let's go through the Void Knight here. Important one, so Void Corruption, this one increases your crit multi for each point spent in Void Knight. And we're going to be spending a lot of points in Void Knight here. So maxed out Abyssal Endurance, Void and Physical Resistance and Health there. Temporal Corruption, this one changes your smite into void and you get flat 10 void damage as well. And we're going to be maxing out our void bolts, so we get flat uh, spell and throwing void damage. We're going to be maxing out our sword and steel, um, this one's going to be increasing your void damage. You could do Devouring Blade, but this one, uh, I just have this one in case it's like a boss fight and I can't be killing anything in the last 4 seconds, so this one's just more for single target boss fights if you do want to clear more and if you're doing uh let's say arenas you could do the firing blade instead of this one i have five points in world eater this one's just void damage leeches health so that uh, the health cost from smite is just leeched back pretty quick and feature strike this is very important um whenever you hit an enemy so it doesn't matter what hit if it's a smite lightning bolt hammer um, if it's lunch, it will do a future uh, strike and it deals 50 void damage um, which is increased by everything else that we're adding uh, void damage with alright so paladin uh, gonna max out your defiance for your attunement so it does increase the damage of smite and also elemental resistance is there 5 points in valor so for valor, valor, whatever, potato, 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 potato uh, 5 points in vitality uh, you need that for a little bit of health uh, flash of balance to get my health and blind chance and I got my holy symbol for health and necrotic resistance and holy precision this one just increases your crit chance by 300% for your throwing and spell but we're really basing our damage more from smite rather than the hammers 
All right, so gears mandatory are the three uh, idols here that would uh, give you a chance to smite when you do hit when throwing attacks. So I've got three of those. I think I have eight, nine, seven, so like 25%. Is that 25? Nine plus eight, 17, 10, 24% chance for me. Um, but if you get that max out, I think it's like 9% each. Um, you're going to have 27 uh, you're gonna want two uh, three by ones here with the smite increased damage, so 53, 55, 51, and increased smite damage. And the rest is just to cap out my resistances. So I have maxed out resistances for uh, everything, basically. All right, for the helmet, I chose this helmet because it has an implicit of uh, critical strength multiplier that increases more uh, damage for all my crits. Um, important part is the plus seven gain on smite use. Uh, you could uh, get this up to 9 gain, that's my use if it's tier 5, but you don't really need that much. Um, and I do have res poison resistance and health for this one. For my amulet, I do have critical strike multiplier, so 46% more damage on everything. And then just cap out resistances for the rest. For my offhand, I do have a katana, since the katana does have a critical strike multiplier. Haha, <laughs> 69% there. Um, and another 40% from uh, my um, modifications there and 22 adaptive spell damage so it uh, just increases my damage a lot for my body I do have the wings of Argentus 40% less damage taken while moving this is quite a rare piece of armor so if you do not have this one I would suggest you switch to a shield variant of this build all right, so another important piece, I do have the Blade of the Forgotten Knight. This one adds 41 spell void damage. Just really buffs that smite uh, void damage a lot. And does have 50 increased void damage as well. With 14% chance to gain haste, so I'm going to be zoom, zoom, zooming all over the maps. So my ring here, I do have increased void damage. Uh, tier 5 for that one. And you only really need a tier 1 for the throwing attack mana cost. And you just cap out the rest for your resistance. For my belt, uh, just increased void damage and health for that one. For defenses, uh, another ring here. I got a 26% uh, increased throwing attack speed, so more damage, uh, more hammers, more damage basically. And you just want that tier one of the throwing attack damage, uh, throwing mana cost there, and just max my resistances. Uh, this one I do have the 3% uh, block chance because I used to have a shield build for this one. Did not do as much damage, but did have uh, a lot of survivability. That was before I had this armor, the Wings of Argentus. For my gloves, uh, you just want that critical strike chance and damage leech on hit. Uh, so you can survive more with uh, each smite you're uh, using health. And just more survivability there. For my boots, you do want tier 5 increased movement speed and just max out the rest of your uh, whatever resistances you need. And for the Sentinel Relic, you do want this one for its implicits for a 61% increased void damage and also the 23%. You don't need that one for the future strike on melee hit since your melee hit's only going to be lunch anyway. Plus, we already have 100% from our passives. You want Critical Strike Multiplier for this one, increased void damage, and also the Leech on health uh, on hit and increased Leech uh, rate. And just max out your resistances. And that's all you really need to do um, for this build. Um, just make sure that when you do cast hammers, you're going, yeah. if it's a high, high health enemy, you're going in a clockwise rotation here just to give him more hammers. So make him eat the same hammer so you don't need to cast. And you're moving with the wings of red for so 40% uh, less damage taken. I do want to show you, it's kind of low chance. So, want to activate your holy aura. You guide the hammers and let's see if the future strike does. No! Okay. So, let's show you how it's done. So, you do want to move in a clockwise rotation. And make your opponent use some hammer. More. The bigger the opponent, the more hammer they use. You want to run clockwise and make them eat that hammer. Again, let's do that one more time just to show you. Activate the holy aura. 
go around. See, the future strike was doing uh, smites there for me. So there's that build, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, will see you all in the next build. Uh, I'm not sure when, but that 8.3 is coming soon. I think early September, and I'll be updating that six spell void. No, no, it was a void knight. As a six, six spell paladin, I'll be updating that with the new warpath updates uh, for 8.3. All right, we'll see you guys.